I'm told uh, that your uh, your work with BEL and other companies in India in 1990s. Yeah, Bar was Bharat Electronics. Bharat Electronics. And, yeah, in ITI and, and such. Absolutely. Uh, so at that time, were you uh, uh, were you involved with the Indian government to a great extent? Not a great extent, but there were some connections and some uh, introductions and so on. Uh, there were initiatives around distance learning and uh, bringing internet to remote villages in India, uh, which was a beautiful initiative at the time. And we were uh, we had the technology that enabled to do that through satellite. So I it see. was fun to, to be in India and try to uh, promote this uh, project. From uh, being an entrepreneur, you moved to being a VC. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about uh, the perks of being entrepreneurs first and VC mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Can you talk more about that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I was a three-time CEO and entrepreneur. I sold two companies. Uh, I love entrepreneurship. I love cr the creativity and so on. And when my partners convinced me to join their fund, uh, they told me, listen, you like funding companies one after the other in a serial manner, why won't you fund uh, several companies? And so I got excited, I joined the fund and I discovered that this is absolutely a mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because, uh, you know, at the beginning, I was, I was not an investor, I was a frustrated CEO. I was uh, sitting in uh, uh, pitch meetings and hearing about new technologies and I was imagining what I could do with these technologies and sometimes got excited and sometimes even invested in companies, but I didn't look at the entrepreneurs. And I worked a lot and invested my heart in the companies. But at the end of the day, I realized that the most important element in investing is the entrepreneur. The more I you know, graduated through this process, the more I understood that it's, the focus is not on me. It's on the founders. And I need to lean back and I need to look at them and see whether they are able to lead their companies, whether they have a big enough vision, whether they know the tactics to move forward, whether they are listening as well, you know, to some feedback and so on. But at the end of the day, we are not managing companies. We are about being an investor. It's about them to lead their companies. So this is a big lesson that I learned. Uh, a couple of Indian startups, uh, successful ones, are uh, seeing um, excessive takeover by investors. Uh, it could be because of loss of trust or because of uh, better management and better resource uh, applications that uh, uh, can go through. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, VCs need to let the entrepreneurs do their job and help in facilitating them do their job better. Uh, do you think that uh, the startups of today face the problem of uh, being overexposed to investor pressure and hence uh, giving up to um, investor demands? Uh, okay, so we had the same, uh, how should I call that, trend in Israel a while ago where it was, we had the mag magic formula of if you wanted to build a great company, you should have brought the American CEO, an experienced CEO. Everybody was looking for the gray hair CEO. I think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake. I think that... Um, it's uh, the entrepreneurs, you should invest in entrepreneurs that you believe can lead their companies. You should provide them guidance, you should provide them help, and they should lead and build their companies. And my advice to entrepreneurs today is uh, talk to your investors, reference your investors, make sure that whoever you are bringing in right. is aligned with your vision. Right. And he's uh, confident enough and respectful enough of you that allow you to do some mistakes because we all make mistakes right. even investors it's very easy to be a taxi driver and give uh, advices and see every uh, little issue that the founder has so i think it will change i think it will change in, in india as well